Have you thought about growing in a straw bale? Or maybe you've never even heard of straw bale gardening. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, and I discuss everything gardening so that you can become a better gardener. Today I'm going to give you all of the steps you need to know to start a straw bale garden. A number of years ago, Joel Karsten graduated from the University of Minnesota with a Bachelor of Science in Horticulture. And with that and his experience from growing up on a farm, he was observing how plants grow around broken down old straw bales. And he came up with an idea that he experimented with over a course of about 15 years until he came up with the idea for straw bale gardening. And his book, Straw Bale Gardens, became a pretty big success. He has since come out with this book, which is Straw Bale Gardens Complete. And I'll put a link to it below. It has all of the steps you need to know to actually start growing in straw bales. Now, it's not as easy as you think. And what I'm going to show you over the course of this video are the steps that are recommended by Karsten in his book. A straw bale garden starts with bales of straw. And this is the first important piece because you don't want hay bales or alfalfa bales. It needs to be a straw bale because of what the material is. When a farmer harvests a crop like wheat or barley or oats, they only want to harvest the tip, the grain, and all the stock and the rest of the plant is just thrown out the back. Well, that's what straw is. This is the unused portion of big crops like that. It has very few seeds and it's made up primarily of the stock of those plants, as in other plants. The stock is the transport mechanism for water to get up to those grains that'll be harvested. But after this has been discarded, it dries out. That actually works to our benefit because each of these individual stalks of straw are hollow. And through capillary action, they will absorb and retain water that is added after they've dried out. And that's a huge benefit in straw bale gardening because when we wet these bales, they tend to stay wet. And so the plants that will be growing in these bales have almost a constant supply of water. And because of the way that the bales are put together, on one end, you'll be able to see some of these hollow stalks that will be poking through the bale. This becomes relatively easy to see because on the other end of the bale, you see very few of the ends. It's just the flattened stalks as they bend the stalks to put the bale together. On the sides of the bale, you'll see how all of the individual stalks are running parallel. So you won't have that folded piece and you won't have the tip. The reason you need to know this information is because there is a specific way to place the bale when you start your straw bale garden. You want to make sure that the side with the open ends is up. flat side of the bale is on the bottom, the stalks are running vertically, and those open tips, the hollow pieces, are on top of the bale. It's important to point out something that's a little unique about these specific bales. Normally when you buy a straw bale, the twine will be on the side of the bale where you see the long vertical stalks and that holds it all together. But occasionally you'll get bales that have been rebaled. And I think that's what happened with these bales because it's pretty obvious that the long vertical pieces run up this side and the open ends are on this top, but the twine wasn't put in to match what's usually normal. So 
still look for the open ends for the top. And if that means that the twine is going to be on the top, well, then so be it. One of the greatest benefits to planting in straw bales is that you can have a straw bale garden anywhere. I have them right here in open ground in my developing garden. But you could just as easily have your straw bales on a driveway or on top of gravel. Or maybe if you've got a lot of tree roots, you could put them on top of the roots. These are essentially little raised beds. And the plants that will grow in here will stay within the confines of each of these individual straw bales. So feel free to be creative. If you want a garden, but you haven't decided yet to build a raised bed, just by placing one of these bales, you can get a head start on the season and start growing. And that brings us to one of the biggest problems with straw bale gardening. You can't do it overnight. These bales require preparation, about two weeks. And if you live in a very cold climate, it can be longer than that. And here's why. We're not actually planting in the straw. What we're planting in is the composted straw. So over the course of the next two weeks or so, I'll be adding a lot of water and a lot of nitrogen fertilizer to begin the decomposition of the straw within the middle of these individual bales. And it's that composted material that will supply some of the nutrients that the roots need. Now, straw itself doesn't have a lot of nutrients, which is where the fertilizer comes in. The nitrogen will benefit the bacteria that are necessary for decomposition. And then the other components, the other nutrients within the individual fertilizer will help feed the plants. We'll start that breakdown today on day one by wetting these bales completely with water and adding fertilizer. And this is why the orientation of the bales becomes important because with the open ends of those individual stalks facing up, they're more likely to start absorbing the water right away. And because the stalks will be running parallel with each other within the bale, the water can easily seep between the stalks and completely saturate the inside of these bales. To jumpstart the decomposition of the straw, I'm using an organic dried blood. This is a 1200 fertilizer, that first number being nitrogen, and that's what I need. Now it's going to take a lot of nitrogen to get this straw decomposing. This is a three pound box. You might have a four pound bag, well, it's recommended that each of these bales is going to need five pounds of a nitrogen fertilizer. I'm starting today with this. I'll probably drop about half of this box in this initial application. And then over the course of the next couple weeks, I'll be adding more nitrogen to get that bacteria active and actively decomposing. I'll sprinkle a fair amount of this dried blood on the straw bale, and then I'll water it in. You can use just about any type of fertilizer that you want, as long as it's high in nitrogen. And this is not a time for slow release fertilizers. We really want this to jump start and this bacteria to start working right away. And the way to do that is by using a fertilizer that can dissolve and work its way into the bale pretty quickly. On day two, we're just going to add water and make sure that these bales are completely saturated. Lily, of course, is interested in the dried blood, but she hasn't tried to disturb these bales yet. On the third day, you want to add fertilizer again. And you could use the same fertilizer you started with. Today I'm mixing it up a little bit and I'm using a fish fertilizer. This is a 511. And I'll mix it according to the directions and then pour it over the straw bales. And for day four, I'll just water again, just like day two. On day five, I'm using the fish emulsion fertilizer again. And I'll give the bales a really good soaking 
of this high nitrogen fertilizer. On day six, you probably guessed, we just water the bales. But then things begin to change. On day seven, day eight, and day nine, you'll want to add more fertilizer, but about half as much each day. And then that'll take us to day 10. On day 10, you want to transition back to full strength fertilizer. But now, rather than focusing on a nitrogen rich fertilizer, we want a balanced fertilizer. And that's a fertilizer where all three numbers are about the same, like a 10, 10, 10, or a 20, 20, 20. This fertilizer is an 18, 18, 21. That's close enough. And I wanna point out that you don't have to use just organic fertilizer. Use what you have or use what you have access to. Mix it as the directions state and then add it to the bales. On day 11, just go ahead and water the bales again, but get your seeds and your plants ready to go because we're going to start growing on day 12. You also want to get some potting soil mix. And it's better if you find one that has some fertilizer in it because as the plants grow, that extra fertilizer is going to make a difference. Because remember, there isn't a lot of nutrition in these straw bales other than the fertilizer that we've been adding and will continue to add. These 12 days of preparation are completely based on Karsten's recommendations. There is flexibility in how you choose to do it. If you're in a very cold region, it might take longer. I've actually had a few days with snow on top of these bales. So I've given my bales a couple extra days so that they could thaw out from my freezing weather. If you've got a very hot climate that you're doing this in, you might be able to get started in 10 days because the process will definitely be faster. And don't be surprised if you don't see some plants already beginning to grow because there might be some seeds left behind from when this straw was harvested. Just pull up the little shoots that have started to grow. And this is also a nice indication that this bale is indeed ready for your seeds and your plants. By following that 12 day recommended cycle or longer, you're more likely to have any seeds that are in these bales sprout. So there's a good reason to follow Karsten's recommendation. At the 12 day point or later, now we can go ahead and put some potting soil on top of these bales. About an inch or two is good and I'll just spread this potting mix all the way to the edges of these bales. You're probably thinking after all of this work over 12 days, why do we now need to add potting mix? Well, it's primarily for seeds because you can grow both seeds and plants in the straw bales. But the straw by itself, even with the fertilizer, is not enough to ensure seed germination. So that's where the potting mix comes in. If you're going to just be transplanting, you don't need the mix, but I do find it to be beneficial. I'm putting some kale into this straw bale and planting it is not much different than planting in any other soil bed. You just dig a hole, but this time we're digging into some really nice moist straw that has started to decompose. When you have your hole, you take your plant and you put it into the hole. Now, this is why I think some of the extra potting soil can be beneficial because when you put it into the hole, this young transplant has some soil to grow into right away. I've got a lot of roots in this because I've been growing it downstairs for a while. But now I just place it into the hole and I'll take some of the rest of that potting soil and put it around the plant. And there's the first of my kale to go in this straw bale. In this straw bale, I'm going to be planting some radishes and you just sow the seeds exactly how it tells you to on the seed package. These seeds go one quarter inch deep 
and the rows should be eight inches apart. So I'm going to do it just like I do in any other bed. I'm going to just give myself an area for the seeds to go about a quarter inch deep and then I'll start sowing the seeds. It doesn't have to be exact because I'm planning on coming back and thinning and then I just cover up that row, do another row, and do the same thing. As the roots of these seeds begin to grow, they'll go down into the straw and get all the nutrients they need. There's really no limitation on what seeds you choose to sow in your straw bale garden. I'm putting lettuce into this bale and I put them in just like I would in any of my other raised beds. You can grow peas, you can grow squash, you can grow anything you want. Just treat this like a raised bed with soil already in it. Just as with any other bed, you want to be sure and water well after transplanting or sowing your seeds. And while the bale itself will help retain the water longer, the top is still going to dry out in the hot sun. So be expecting to increase your water needs when these plants are young, just to keep that top surface nice and moist. Some of this extra straw, you can actually put it on top of this potting mix to act as a mulch to cut down on some of that watering when the sun is particularly hot. Do anticipate the height of the plants that you'll be growing in these bales because they're suitable for anything. After I harvest the kale and the radish and the lettuce, I'll be growing tomatoes and cucumbers. Well, they're going to require a trellis. So I'm using one of my tomato trellises in the future for the upward growth of those plants. Don't think that you're limited by growing in a straw bale. This is just a place for the roots to grow. But as the plants grow up, do anticipate that you're going to need some type of trellis to support those plants. There are some issues that you need to be concerned about. It's not all good. The first being the cost. It seems like this would be a really inexpensive way to garden. And it can be if you can find a good source for your bales. But look at all the fertilizer that had to be used to get these bales ready. And it's going to take more fertilizer during the growing season. In a bed where you've already got good soil, you're not going to need that much fertilizer. And you need at least six of these bales to reach an equivalent area of about a four foot by eight foot bed. I do suggest when you go to your ranch or farm center to pick up the bales to ask about old bales. Not only are they more likely to have any seeds in them already have sprouted, but they're usually sold at a discount because a lot of the people with horses that are buying straw want new straw and not old straw. You can't grow up to the edge of these straw bales like you can in the ground or in a raised bed because the outside's going to dry out and you need to keep the plants closer to the middle. You can try putting them closer together and that helps, but that does lead into the potential problem for rodents building nests within the straw. So if you have a rodent problem, do consider that. But even after they've been planted, they're still portable. You can move them around to other areas as necessary. And one of the best benefits for me and the primary reason why I grow in straw bales is for the soil improvement. Think about all the fertilizer that's working its way down through these bales. So the soil underneath is already got more fertilization than any other area of my garden. And at the end of the season, when these bales have mostly decomposed, I'll break them apart and spread them over the soil. And that'll act to improve a larger area of my garden. I love that benefit. I do think that straw bale gardens are better for gardeners who have a little bit more experience just because of some of those issues. But even if you're a brand new gardener and you want to try it, well, the Straw Bale Gardens Complete book gives a lot of information on how to start the seeds and care for the plants and even build your own bells and trellises. So it could be something to check out. 
If you have any questions, by all means, let me know in the comments below. And if you learned something from this video, well, then consider subscribing to the Gardener Scott channel and click on the bell so you know when new videos are coming out. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening. Mm -hmm.